On this Patagonian plateau, Darwin stumbles across one of his key discoveries. Darwin and his companions sit down to a typical gaucho dinner, a small ria. As he eats, the naturalist notices that the bird seems different than the others he's seen. He salvages the wings, the head, and much of the skin. In time, these remains will be identified as a separate species, Darwin's Rhea. The naturalist can't understand why there would be a second species that's so similar to the first. He's also perplexed by something else he learns about the giant birds. Where exactly do you find the big Nandu versus the small Nandu? In the north of Patagonia, there are the big rayas, and in the south, the smaller or lesser ones. Darwin learns that the common Rio ranges north of the Rio Negro, while the smaller one extends to the south. The closely allied species seem to replace one another across the region. It's a remarkably clear but inexplicable pattern. Darwin also can't account for a feature the flightless Rhea shares with some of the other birds he sees nearby. We find in South America three birds which use their wings for other purposes besides flight. The penguin as fins, the steamer as paddles, and the ostrich as sails. Perhaps strangest is the steamer. Though they look like most other ducks, steamers can't fly. Instead, they use their wings to paddle across the surface of the waves. It's unclear to Darwin why an all-powerful creator would design such unusual creatures. The radically different uses for their wings might suggest that the birds had changed. If this was possible, they could have lost their ability to fly. Darwin is intrigued, but he remains committed to the more established idea that species don't transform. One reason is the fact that living things seem to have remained constant through recorded time. But Darwin is only beginning to discover the difference between the scope of human experience and the history of life on Earth.